Hi everyone, welcome back to Casual Watch Talk Live. Uh, sorry that we were a, a minute or so late there. Uh, I had something at work that uh, that that started up, but um, uh, thank you everyone for joining. We're going to do something. Well, before I do that, I'll just introduce the rest of the panel. So we've got Patrick from Pocket Watch Time. Thank you for joining us. Hey everybody, got my co uh, co host Jason. How are you? Hey everyone, I'm doing fine. How are you doing? Well, guys, should we kick it off with a bit of a a, a, a wrist a wristwatch check? Do you want to talk? talk through your jason do you want to go first to what, what you were in today i'm wearing my helm i want to speaking of great watches under 500 dollars. <laughs> is this the one you've been waiting on is it, no is no it... no that's a titanium okay that will also be under 500 dollars. but this one is a uh, i got off of a member of the watch fam it usually goes for like 375 it's a stainless steel version okay yep oh, awesome well, I'm uh, doing the uh, the tried and true uh, Tudor Black Bay fifty eight nine two five. Oh, nice! And uh, but I've got it on a uh, on a Vanguard strap because what's the point of having a dive watch if it's on something I can't get it wet in? And <laughs> uh, and so I've I've heard varying reviews online. Some people say that Vanguard is horrible, but I've actually had a wonderful experience with them, and uh, I think it's a great little strap. Yeah, I've I've always had a well, I would say that I'd had a positive experience with Vanguard because they sponsored a show once and they did oh. send me a strap that I really actually quite liked. So um they sent me one for my Black Bay fifty eight and I I really liked it actually. I wore it wore it for quite a while on the Black Bay fifty eight. I had no no issues with it. So Yeah, well even though I didn't know you were you had a sponsor at one point, I think they're great. So Vanguard oh, yeah. thumbs up to you and what I really love about them is they make us small. And so a lot of the, the big companies like the Everest and the, the others, they, they make it one size fits all. And uh, for the smaller wrist community, a, uh, a small is wonderful. So that's it. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bill, thanks for that. We're at, Our <laughs> picks are going to be under 500. Yeah, picks we're are not, under 500. Yeah, our picks are under 500. We're not, we're not, uh, we're not, um, what's, what's the name? Um, practicing what we preach <laughs> um i'm wearing my uh speed timer again with the on the uncle seiko i know this is like the third week in the row now but i really like this one so i've been wearing it's like my work watch just pick it up grab and go quartz and we're having a discussion on the facebook group actually about quartz somebody was asking which is which is better mechanical or quartz and it, it, it it's one of those never-ending questions isn't it um, of course, for timekeeping, quartz is better. Well, shall we? Is there any other questions coming in so far? Hello, everyone. Um, well, should we kick this off with our picks for? We're going to go with each pick three watches that newish watches out this year that we think are great value below five hundred dollars. So maybe it'll give you some ideas. There's a there's a theme. There's a consistent themes running through this of certain brands that we've picked. Um, <laughs> yeah. So. Well, why don't we kick it off with who sh who wants to go first? What, how, how do you want to play it, guys? Do you want to do one each or do you want to go? Somebody goes, Jason, do you want to go all th through all three of yours first? And then uh, and then Patrick can go through his and I can go through mine. How should we how should we play it? That'll work. Whatever you have, whatever you have listed in. Um, Chris just popped in, said he can join if he wants or if you wanted to. Uh, yep, Chris, I'll send you the link if you've got some picks. That would be awesome as well. Or or you can give some color commentary on there. Let me just send you the link, Chris. In I'm going to send it you in Discord, mate. I like there his profile picture. It's very official. Yes. <laughs> right. I'm going to make an educated... We'll do one each. So, Jason, we're going to start with yours first. Oh, okay. So, let me... Um... Oh, here's Chris. Hi, Chris. Hello. Hey Chris. How's hey Chris. All right. Cool. So, so we're going to start, Chris. We're going to start with uh, Jason's picks. So you're going to give some color commentary on these ones. So, Jason, okay. first up, you had the Citizen Pro Master under five hundred dollars. Usually, you can get them for a lot less, can't you? Which is good. But what yeah. was your what was your thinking behind this one? It's a good looking watch, isn't it? Yeah. So it's I did a little reading on it. It's after the I guess it was called the Orca back in the day. They had a model like that, and I just thought it was. Probably one of the most fun dive watches that you can actually go diving with, it looked like. And there's a blue version, too. 
Oh, yeah. It's really big. I'm almost positive this one's 46 millimeters when I looked at it. But I just thought, like, it looks really practical, like this, the strap and the way the strap is integrated with the case. And then and there's cool little aspects like the indexes or indexes, wherever you want to call them, look like they said orca teeth. Um, I think it's highly legible. I think both of them, the black one and the blue one, especially if it was dark and, you know, once your loom runs out, that white contrasted against the blue or the black, I think would be pretty useful. I don't know about the minute timer on the, you know, what would be the bezel insert traditionally, I guess, whatever. That's really small, but I guess if the watch is 46 millimeters, it might show up a lot more than you would think. I just thought it was a fun watch. Uh, it looks like it's well put together and it looks like you could actually go use it for what it's designed to be used for. Yeah, and it comes with uh, one of the most uh, controversial, I think the most useless watch box ever, is the <laughs> Mini Scuba. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Uh, so you can, so you can it, do some it, uh, airbrushing later with it or something. You know? Yeah, yeah. It, all, it also, it does look a sneakily bit like a monster, doesn't it? The, the yes, it does. Very close. Do we, do we have non-Photoshop... 3D generated computer pictures of it because this is this is the most like this thing is like this a Kada look, Kardashian you're thinking I, on Instagram right I'm like does this exist like does this this <laughs> looks heavily like I, this is a 3D rendering this looks like a yeah I don't think this is even the even the back and side shot is super like can we see the real watch and not the 3D model of the watch <laughs> yeah you think this watch has been uh, it's it's currently in witness protection or it's been in court so yeah, the past yeah. The pastel drawing well, or, or or i mean and i and i've seen uh, i've seen other companies do this they'll test the waters with their like th oh there we go there we go they'll test the waters with their uh, 3d animated version and even then the 3d animated stuff is getting pretty good this looks like a you know this looks like a, a, a unrealistic <laughs> shot of it so yeah it certainly looks like the best is more concave doesn't it then yeah okay well, that yeah. was that was our first one up, and then I'm gonna go with. Uh, we'll jump to uh, one of yours, uh, Patrick, on this one. We'll go with your. Ah, oh, this is a funky Seiko Five. I don't think I've seen this one before. Yeah, well, that's obviously what caught my attention was I just loved the funkiness of it. I mean, I, I love an olive drab watch, and for it to have two tones of olive drab or kind of like a a desert tan plus olive, I was like, that's a pretty neat watch. I know it's a limited edition for something, but I don't even understand what it's a limited edition for. I think it was like for HUJ, but I don't know what that stands for. But huge. I, what is it? <laughs> I said oh. huge. <laughs> oh, huge, huge. <laughs> but I, said, I just thought it was a really cool watch. It, it hit under the price point, and uh, and you know you can't you can't beat a Seiko yeah. in the under five hundred dollar category. I, th I think modders will be buying this just to get a hold of the bezel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a cool bezel. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll go with one of mine. I, let me just, you can see what mine are across the top. So, um, I, I, first up, I went with the, um, I like, I uh, I'm a big fan of Veya. I'm hoping the guys come back on the channel. But anybody who's not familiar with Veya, this is a Californian based watch company. They assemble, well, they assemble. They have Swiss assembled watches and they have US assembled watches. The US assembled watch, I think they make them in uh, around Chicago somewhere, Illinois somewhere. And they're doing some great things. They do these field watches. They're one of the few watch companies that will guarantee their water resistance. And that was really important to them because they were two uh, like passionate surfers. So they wanted a watch that they could stand behind anyway. They, they, created this uh, full disclosure they've sent me a couple of watches in for review i'm a huge fan of them but i picked this one they do mechanical versions but this one is a solar solar quartz 399 it, it, it's a great looking watch this case is fantastic that they put on it this um, dive watch case the bracelet is 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 good as well but i just like the blue and the gold and i think it's you know, you're supporting a very small micro brand. There's only two two of the guys, Ryan and Reagan, that run it, assembled in the US. I don't think you can go wrong with this. A really, really good micro brand. I'm a big fan. So there we go. Yeah. I had one of their field watches once. Oh yeah. The Quartz Field Watch. I had it for a while. It's pretty nice. It's it's interesting that they're I, I didn't realize they were in the solar. That's good. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they've actually got um, three different solar quartz models that you can also mm, if, if yeah. I hit that one, it'll show you the uh, the automatic version as well. So they do most yeah. of the watches in. That was one of the things that they did early on was they created similar looking watches in both quartz and mechanical, which I don't yeah. think you often see that, do you? So if you like yeah. the design, you could pick. It's a it's a big for for me. Quartz solar is is big. Like that, that would that is basically the decision of why I would just go quartz because I just know that the thing I could just leave it on, leave it in the sun for a few days on the, on the on the tray, or uh, you know it's it's kind of ready to go and then and then worst worst case I've got to charge it up a little bit but it's it's much more likely to last the next five six years and get and get wrist time in the next five six years than. Uh, than a quartz that's three years in a dead battery or you know like some of the mechanical mechanical chronographs or the mecha quartz sorry that are that'll last you know the battery lasts a hot minute <laughs> yeah that's yeah. why two, two of my rico drives because i figure for 500 dollars, i mean if it's a person that just wants to get a watch they know they're going to be able to pick it up it's going to work you know I, yeah i don't think you can I, i've had a bunch of eco drive watches before i even collected and they just work and yep you don't even need that long in the sun. You can just put them in front of the window. Yeah. And I'm talking, give them three or four hours in the sun. That thing's going to run for a minute. Yeah. I, I recently reviewed a Luminox watch and it was $700. This Luminox watch, it was massive. It was, I don't know, 47 millimeters or something. It was a great solid watch, but the movement in it, it just had a, a real bog standard. Uh, Ronda quartz movement in it and that was one of the things that I said like they could have for that money easily have put a solar quartz in there or uh, you know thermo compensated quartz or something like that for the money I mean this it was a similar price to this Seiko speed timer that mm. uh, Luminox I was not impressed with yeah it's going to be accurate but there was nothing fancy about the the movement at all and a lot mm. of the G-Shocks are solar aren't they and a lot of the Seikos and obviously mm -hmm. the eco drive from citizen which is fantastic is solar yeah. as well cool okay well then i think i'll start with patrick i think you're up next oh well let me uh preface this <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. this one will get hate and this one will get love <laughs> but when, when you sent out the request for you know the best under 500 hundred dollar watch of the year i mean, had to be I, right I mean, as said, I, I can't argue at, with at MSRP retail price of yeah. <laughs> so well, well, yeah, and and this is I've just I don't know whether you've seen it yet or this is a great tie-in if you haven't, but I just uploaded a video on my thoughts on this watch like two months afterwards, and I titled it "The Best Worst Watch Release of 2020." Absolutely, hundred yeah, percent. And I mean, and that that sums it up. I mean, like. What a what a release! What a hype train! But then they just completely let it <laughs> run everybody next, over. And, next, Can we get the next the, watch in here. <laughs> the greatest lie when they were like, "Oh, and then we're going to put it online," and then they're like, "Oh, no, no, we're not." And it's just like, right. what? Yeah, what? that that that's the one that really got me was the whole because my wife and I saw him, and, and my wife's gotten the watches because of me, right? It's totally my fault. And right when they got released, she's like, "Oh, what a great idea!" You know, just as a person who's kind of into watches, she was just like, that is a great idea. Yeah. And, yeah, and, and right there, yeah. like your wife, my wife, we, we watched the video and my wife were like, those are cool. I'd get one of those. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like looking at her like, who are you? Yeah. <laughs> and, and here's the crazy and they, part. And, and, yeah. And the crazy part is, is like, I don't know if Swatch or Amiga has anyone that sits in a meeting and listens to stuff like this and says, let's do the math on this real quick. Let's just say there's a hundred thousand watch collectors and 50% of their wives are like, or their significant right. others or friends or whoever, whoever's in right. their little sphere is like, I want one of those. Now, now multiply yeah. that by three or four. And then it's like when the whole, you know, the Q thing and everything came up, my wife's like, eh, we considered driving up to Pennsylvania. I'm like, it's not. Once I saw the lines, I'm like, we're not going to do it. Yeah. So when they came out and said they were going to be online, we were both totally stoked about they were going to be online. And then like two days later, oh, they're not going to be online. <laughs> And then my wife just, you know, basically was like, forget it, you know? And I'm like, yeah, me yeah. too. Forget yeah. it, because I would have bought one online and waited. And that's completely my take on it. Like, I was excited right. about its release. I was talking about maybe driving down to Miami, which is like four hours away. And But then I 
kind of heard rumors about the lines and the limited quantities. I'm like, I'm not that interested. And yeah. then, yeah. of course, my, my wife went on a, a work trip to New York. And, of course, she has a whole bunch of uh, Swatch uh, boutiques there. So I said, you know, swing on by and just check out the shops and see. And, of course, for the three days that she was able to go into a store, they didn't have them. And right. so... I'm like, so even though they're in boutique only, they're barely ever yeah. there. And you can't get yeah. them online. Like, I'm done. Yeah, yeah it was funny. Hearts. I made this. Breaking yeah, hearts. I made this joke. I, it, watch that video, guys, because it's not it's not a review of the Moon Swatch. It's about my thoughts on how it was released. And I made that joke about um, it would be funny if you were, you know, an Omega, Omega executive and you're at some fancy dinner and you and they're like, <laughs> oh, what do you do for work? You're like, oh, I work for I work for Omega. And then they're like, oh, I know, I know the Speedmaster. My uh, daughter has the pink one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and again, if, if any of the executives, if like anybody catches this, like if anyone is listening, you're like the, the concept that my wife would be super interested in this. It's such a like, uh, you had, you had pure marketing gold mm -hmm. and then you're like, mm -hmm. let's, Let's do an eBay only release, I guess. So, all right. Yeah, let's fumble the ball. <laughs> right, Jason, you're up, and this this is a this is a full disclosure. This is another watch I've reviewed, and I did get like this is maybe paid promotion. They sent me one of these watches, <laughs> but I, I I really liked it. But so this is a good pick. But here we go. Is the the Razer or the ra yes. the Riser? I think it's R Z E now. I've heard it uh, said somewhere. Hmm. They're very specific. It's uh, whatever. It's a uh, it's uh, the WWE logo. Anyways, so first of all, those of you that know me, it, this thing's all gray. So just sign me up. Like, <laughs> hey, Omega and Swatch, I would have bought the Mission to Mercury. Oh, but wait, I can't buy it. I liked it because it was all gray. So I might just right. end up getting this thing. Uh, now, it's only under $500 if you take the straight up original option. Everything else on the titanium bracelet on another strap it, it, they're all a little bit the titanium bracelet i think it's 5.99 and then it's you know 520 or something like that on the next strap but this would be fine for me uh i just love now i've seen the resolute one compared to this and i know that the resolute one was blasted and this one is brushed yeah and it looked like they were the same dimensions in the case but to me the brushing on this in the in the videos I saw brings out the the contour and the shapes of the case a lot more, and it, it made the first one I wouldn't even turn a second eye to it, but this one here, I'm like, oh, I really like the shape of that case because it's almost samurai esque, and I know they go on and on about how it's like an explorer on the dial, and I know Sam, there's no date anymore, so that makes you mad, uh, which I fully support because I support you in your date addiction, um, <laughs> but it's it's a great. I think it's a great watch. And I just think for me, the case design, like the case shape, it's like, I, I think it's 44 millimeters. So for me, I mean, I have a seven and a half inch wrist. I could wear that thing all day. Uh, yeah. I just really like the look of it. I like how clean and simple it is. And I'd like to get one in my hands because I haven't yet held the field watch that I really dig. So yeah, they, these, are, these are, um, they're, they're fantastic watches. So they, I think one of the founders of this company worked for Boulder before this and boulder's another great singapore based watch company that are just killing it with their watch their titanium watch designs and um, i had the blue the, the blue sunburst dial which looked awesome and then the original one they sent me with that was gray as well they're just really solid well-made watches and I, I fully i fully support this pick they're one of my favorite watches that i've reviewed i've reviewed both ones on the channel if anybody wants to check it out but again they they did they did send me one for free for yeah. review. It's got a nice, uh, it's got a nice like industrial design, uh, field watch esque, you know. Mm, yeah. So, can, can, Sam, is there a side shot of the case or like a three quarter shot of the? Yeah, of the... and this um, Crown and Cactus, who just uh, added the original name, is is Rise means travel. That's ah. that's right, but there were so many of, uh, and I uh, partly blame us YouTubers. Because there were so many of us that we didn't know how to pronounce it. So we were calling it Rise, but it's actually like Rise, Razor. So they, mm -hmm. actually, they actually took that feedback and thought, actually, maybe it is confusing. So we suspect that's why they changed the name. 
because mm. people would just mispronounce it. I've actually got a T-shirt with it on somewhere. So <laughs> I, I think yeah. I like the original name a little bit better just because I don't like the just R-Z-E. It's just a little weird. But uh, yeah, I guess the pronunciation could mess it up, though. Yeah, this yeah. this looks quite they've, like they've gone a little bit chunkier on it as well. I quite like that yeah. side profile. Yeah, I like yeah. a cut of this thing's jib. I like everything about it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I would like uh, yes, uh, you would like uh, uh, sixteen gauge bolts on all of your bracelets. I get it. Yes, <laughs> yes. Real ribbons. Give me yeah, real that's, ribbons. That's a nice watch. I've never heard of that brand. Yeah, they they they're, they're, they're really. So I made a comment in that review. And I'll, I'll probably make it several times, especially yeah. because we're reviewing some of the titanium watches of, because that Riser, Riser watch came out at the time that Omega released the No Time to Die. And they were making such a song and dance about the titanium case on that No Time to Die. I'm like, look, there's these small micro brands mm. that are doing just as good tooling with titanium. And the, it's just like, oh, we just made a titanium watch for five hundred dollars, and Omega's like, we machined this uh, amazing titanium case. And you're like, okay, this guy's in Singapore doing it, you know, in the back hands <laughs> yeah. almost, uh, right. just as good, or allegedly. Um, okay, well, my next one is uh, this is what spurred this whole thing on for me was seeing this watch, and normally I'm I'm not the first to uh, you know give any props to mid range Seiko mechanicals, but this one just blew me away when they released it. I, I, just, I don't know whether I was expecting a, a GMT 5KX or SKX, but they've just, if it looks half as good as the picture, it, it, it's going to look amazing, this thing. So mm -hmm. it's, it, it's great. It's great. I'm excited. I'm so excited about this. Like, to the level that four years ago, I tried to put a uh, GMT Swiss movement into an SKX case. That's that's how much I want a GMT diver, <laughs> right? Yeah. Or something, you know, so, something that looks like this that has the GMT on it. It's, I mean, always my wheelhouse for for, you know, ha being being able to track uh, a couple time zones. This is this is so cool. So, yeah, so new watch collector question here: If I own a UTC piece, can I also own a GMT piece? <laughs> I, I I'm asking for a yes. friend. I'm yeah. asking for a friend. Right. Yeah. You just have to you just have to set it to zero. Right. Yeah. You just have to <laughs> Well and, and technically this is technically this is three time zones, isn't it? Because you've got right. the inner rotate inner track and the outer rotate, which that's the, the even the Rolex GMT doesn't have that. So they've got that over the um yeah. You've got the outer and, bezel, the inner ring. I and actually while we're here, let me let me just say I never get to ask the crowd this. Okay. Okay. The term true GMT now is that what we're using? So there's the the Rolex Jump Hour GMT, right? Yeah. So that when you get to the place you're going to, your your 24 hour hand stays where it is, and you jump your hour. And then there's the office GMT, which makes me feel less of a person, I guess, where you can where where you can individually jump the GMT hand. But you don't, you can't jump the hour hand. So I don't know how you guys feel about that nomenclature, but whoever's we'll putting these, it. yeah, whoever these, whoever's putting this, uh, this marketing out just makes me, you know, like, oh, this is less of a, like, I have less of a GMT, but uh, I, uh, I think, <laughs> I think this thing's great. And I think the ability to track multiple time zones, awesome. Yeah. Tra Travelers GMT. There's another, that's, that's another term. Well, this like is if a whole you're going show to the place. I know, right? Yeah, it's a whole a whole thing, and it's a whole show in itself, isn't there? Because I think there's multiple GMT mechanisms, isn't there? And then there's right. the world timer, which has the the cities around the bezel, which whenever you review it is controversial because it'll have a country that's either politically changed its name or or doesn't you know, exist anymore or it doesn't exist yeah. anymore like Constantinople yeah. or something on there. Right. I, it'd be interesting <laughs> to see. I don't know yet. We don't know yet if you can. If if it if it's a jump, uh, GMT like the, if you could change the GMT hand or it like moves it that whatever it it doesn't matter it keeps track of the time it keeps track of multiple time zones I'm in. It I is a it. variant of one of the existing movements. I think it's a variant of the four. Is it the four R thirty five or something that they? It's the four R thirty four. So it's a four R thirty five. I'm guessing with the GMT mechanism gear gear smashed onto it. All right, cool. Okay, so next oh. Patrick, your last one here. We'll add this to the stream. This is oh, this is the Loom Tech you were talking about last week. 
Yeah, at least the brand. And uh, when when we were kind of in the five hundred dollars, I always I, I didn't know if I was going to get underneath the price line for this, but they they make one called the B series, which is just kind of a military combat watch, and uh, and I, I've kind of always liked it. And speaking of UTCs and uh, and GMT hands, uh, you know there they you know. they make this with a, a UTC and. I just think it's a it's a heck of a lot of watch for five hundred bucks. Titanium as well. Yeah, we're getting a lot of decent titanium picks. Were you say was this the brand you mentioned last week that they make one out of tungsten? Yes. Yeah. And so they they don't I think anymore, but they they at the beginning of their their origin of this little micro brand, which they've been around for almost 10, 15 years, mm. they they dabbled in tungsten and they dabbled in cobalt. And uh I think they ran into problems with cobalt. I think there were people who were having like pretty bad like allergies with it. So oh. they 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 pulled all the cobalts and I don't think they like even claim they did it anymore. So uh, I, I don't know what reaction people had to cobalt, but I do remember hearing about cases of uh, people with prosthetic hips who had cobalt in them and having some pretty serious problems so i guess oh, wow. I, I guess cobalt doesn't like human skin very well yeah because i am um, i made a, a comment on my last christopher ward review about well, that had a bronze case and i said that the bronze case on the back is to stop it patinering on the back but then i realized afterwards that I think people can also be allergic to bronze, can they? Is that why there's always a stainless steel case back? Or is it because it's too soft to... Combination, it's because bronze has a lot of copper in it. And copper is is a highly, you know... Yeah, reactive. Reactive metal to people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. also just because it's going to stain you. So a lot right. of times they'll put stainless steel or titanium just to give you a, a separation from getting a green hand. Yeah, yeah and that's the, why you never buffer. see it bracelet that's why you never see a yeah. bronze bracelet except, I'm guessing. except for that tuner black bay bronze they they made a full bronze bracelet and yep. i'm i'm curious to see what that looks like in a year or two on people's wrists mm. just because that would be very interesting yeah it, yeah it certainly also depends on the the combination of metals there because if it's stabilized you know then there's more sort of brass in it than yeah copper yeah. right well, Does our yes. feel like Rolex treats Tudor like their brother? Like, there's two brothers in a family, right? And Rolex is the older brother and always <laughs> gets the younger brother to do something. Yep. And if the younger like brother doesn't get in trouble, then everything's cool. But if the younger brother does get in trouble, the older brother Rolex tells the mom, like, hey, I told him not to do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's, a great, That's a great point. 100%. Yeah. And, uh, it's it's um, one of our Facebook members, Sunil, who I interviewed, who basically bought a watch collection of all these amazing tool watches and then sold them. And we talked through about what he learned from it. He owned both the bronze and the silver. And he said that only the silver discolored. He said that he had mm. the bronze for a while and it never actually patinaed. Mm. But the silver Black Bay 58 did change color, did tarnish. Uh, uh, but we, say, we can't say tarnish, can we? It's the watches. It, it, it patinaed. Yeah. That's it right. bloomed a different color. Yes. Yeah, well, I, I'll second that. I, there's definitely some areas of pretty strong tarnish on mine. Oh, it's, <laughs> is, uh, that's what you're wearing. I didn't... Oh, yeah. Was... Oh, wow. So, uh, yeah, I've had it for about 10 months now. So I'm, I'm waiting for another two months. Then I'll make my, my year review to show uh, how tarnished it's gotten in a year. Well, because I haven't ever, you know, cleaned it or done anything. What color is oh. the tarnish that you get on that bronze one? Patrick? Yeah. Uh, it depends on the chemicals. So yeah. uh, well, most... I'll, put, I'll put your full screen if you can show it. Can you can we can oh, you see yeah, it on yeah. the camera? Uh, let's see. So... Oh, so it's the bronze, not the silver. Sorry, I, I missed that before. Well, no, this is the silver. Oh, That's yeah. the okay. silver. But so yeah. like right here in that lug, see that sort of brownish discoloration? Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. It, yeah. Whatever alloy they made on the silver, it doesn't tarnish like normal uh, silver. And that's mm. kind of what's weird about it. it. It does kind of have a, you know, the internet calls it kind of almost a doo-doo brown tone because mm. it, it's, it kind mm. of, it's like the strap on that loom tech. It just, yeah. it, instead of being a gray black tarnish, which is kind of your normal silver, it definitely has a brown hue to it. Mm. And so brown, it's, 
There's nothing it's, wrong with Brown. Hey, I, I don't have a problem with it. I love it. But yeah. uh, but as I said, it, it definitely that's what people are making fun of. But uh, to answer the question about the the bronze, though, it depends on the the concentration of different chemicals in there. You know, most of them that have a higher uh, you know copper will be a little bit more green. But mm-hmm. if they're you know higher bronze, they they sometimes are even a little bit more blue. But it, it just really depends on the the alloy. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Jason, we'll go on to next your next one, which is a total surprise. <laughs> um, I, I think I accidentally showed it before. So this is the <laughs> another titanium. This is the this is a citizen. This is the super titanium gray, armor. Gray, gray, gray. Yeah. Yeah. So so I'm explain myself here real quick. So you know the titanium watches. I, I've known that there's been titanium watches for a long time. And I think Citizen was the first brand I really knew had titanium watches, like mass produced, right? And my issue with titanium, with, with Citizen's titanium watches originally was, you know, maybe because I, I don't know as much as I know now, I, I used to like my watches more of a traditional shape. I didn't care if they were square or rectangle, but I liked the clear delineation between um, the bracelet and the case and the lugs like i like the shape to look like they say when you're a little kid you instantly realize the shape of a truck right so you pick up on what a truck shape is and all that stuff so that's how i kind of was with watches and with the titanium watches they maybe it's because at the time their ability to you know shape them or cut them or whatever isn't as good as it is now but everything was kind of like round like integrated and round and maybe they were just way ahead of the time maybe like in 30 22 everyone's wearing you know, round titanium integrated watches, mm-hmm. but it just, it just wasn't for me. So, you know, now that I saw that Helm can make their Von Natu in titanium and it looks just like a straight up dive watch and there's plenty of other ones, but this is the first one I sent you, Sam. I, I found this one because the one that I sent you wasn't on their website. So I was like, okay. Uh, and I would crown a cactus. I actually love the brightly narrow space. I just have yeah. never seen one in person, but if I do, I'm going to buy it. So just don't, don't want to show me one in person. I love that watch. Yeah. I know. It looks pretty sweet. Um, <laughs> but when I saw this one, and I know some people are going to say this could look like, you know, part AP, part Nautilus, it's, uh, whatever. But I saw this and I was like, man, this is a cool looking watch and probably has the first integrated bracelet I've seen that looks okay. And I don't know how else to explain it. And I know it's all gray and everything, but I know it's eco drive. I know you could get this for less than, I mean, that's a pretty good price for sale. Maybe they're not moving a lot of them, but yeah, it looks like something that you could wear out for a day of fun or out for a night in the town. It's clean. It's simple. It's eco drive. I know it's going to work. Um, and I just thought it was a snazzy little watch. And I, and I got to believe, I mean, I don't, I know sometimes with titanium stuff, it'll, it'll tell you the weight, but I don't even care. Because I know when you get it on, it's going to be lighter than even what you read. It's just going to be <laughs> super light. So I, I thought it was a cool watch. Yeah, yeah. it's it, it's a really cool watch. Michael's right. This they did do a. I don't think this is the one, but they did do a Falcon and Winter Soldier Marvel version of this. But mm. I think Jason, I put this as a bonus because I did find it. But I think this one is. The, was this the one that you were thinking of? Because yeah. I think this is awesome. This this mm. I think this one looks the business. Uh, big time. Hmm. Um, I, I found a couple on that's eBay. A, but... That's a previous. That's a yeah. That's a previous channel. That's, yeah, yeah, that's the new one. No, this is a new one. This oh, is a, okay. This is a brand new one. I think. I think they probably bought it out to rival that PRX. I'm guessing from so mm. I actually mm. really like the look of this. I found yeah. a couple on eBay around three hundred, which again for a titanium watch with integrated. Yeah, well, going. Going back to the gray, I think we should do a show uh, where we just um, get Jason out of his comfort zone and like get him like a teal <laughs> no watch, watch and see what it, you know, like what you know, could you could you rock the yellow, like orange? Yeah, let's let's yellow? get him a pink Something moon bright. Spot. Something so bright. Yeah, Something I've, super bright. Yeah, and I I appreciate it. Maybe it, it would probably help me. Um, like I, I know we only have so much time. We're only at thirty four minutes. So when I was going when I when I retired from the Navy, I didn't I hadn't finished any of my college stuff. Right, so. I was just going hard at it and I was working a full-time job, going to school, doing my bachelor's and my master's and stuff. And I told my wife one day, you know what? I'm really tired of thinking about what I'm going to wear because (laughs) for 20 years, you don't have to think about it. Right. You wake up, put your uniform on go. 
And then I was picking out clothes. I'm like, man, I'm wasting so much time. And so I still, I told her one day we went to a store, I won't name it, but I got like eight pair of gray slacks, three pair of black slacks. <laughs> I think I got a pair of blue one and I got yeah. some black shirts, some gray shirts and some blue shirts. And I said, I'm done. Like a pair of right. brown leather shoes, a pair of black leather shoes. And I've carried yeah. that on, man. I've carried that on this whole entire time because I don't have to. Great. Good yeah. enough because I just don't have to. I don't have to make a decision. So maybe I, I yeah, need I'm, an I mean, Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm definitely like. Uh, I was talking the other day. Like, uh, I have more tendency to like uh, Gen X in mourning for my lost childhood. So I'll just go black. You know, like you yeah. know, oh, black jeans, black pants. It's like, yeah, that's a good color. Black shoes, whatever. But uh, you no know, emo. But yeah, the gray. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. But the gray, like, uh, it's very, it's like a not, it's a statement, not statement. <laughs> yeah. So. I yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I enjoyed that. Uh, the the speaking of Marvel, not that we were, but we were talking about winter. But that that um, the uh, one division. I really like that series where they did the first couple in black and white. Oh yeah. Yeah, right. and then they started transitioned into glorious Technicolor. Okay, well, I think I'm on my last one now, and then we can see if we've got any suggestions from the audience. Actually, before we do that, um, Roar of the Tiger said, I once owned a black PVD magnesium case, three-hand oh. automatic yeah. citizen. Mm. Wow. 1972. 1972, yeah. Yeah, they just don't, they don't make them like they used to. Also, if uh, the watch, if somehow the watch, if you have a fire, you can't put that out. With yeah, I was going. thinking that school <laughs> experiment was that magnesium where you they say don't look at the light, you're going to blind yourself. Where they in the, in the navy, we call that a class Delta fire. We have four classes of fire, right? Alpha, right. Bravo, Charlie, Delta. Yeah, and the only yeah. thing you can do is the, they used to tell us when we first came to the navy, dump sand on it, and uh, we used to laugh because they would only give you one bucket of sand per locker. Right. <laughs> It's like I don't have enough sand, bro, at all. Nope. Yeah. Or you just, just that dump, thing. Yeah, dump copious yeah. amounts of water over it or push it yeah, over the yeah, side yeah. with water. Yeah. yeah. yeah you're pretty so much screwed. Uh, in in motorsports, it was uh, you know, they have a bunch of from the sixties and seventies, they had a bunch of stuff they made out of magnesium and had that. Uh but surprisingly, it's a material that they're they're coming back to for some motorsport stuff because it is it has like strength to weight properties and uh, that that are better in some applications. Uh, so you know, you sometimes you sometimes see them, but uh, yeah, don't go near a fire. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, was that? Yeah, yeah. That was because I, I remember that like magnesium ribbon at the school where they would light it with the Bunsen burner and it blind everybody. <laughs> Um, well, my final one is it's another citizen. We're like, we're, this is it's good. Old, this is citizen, Just, best citizen yeah. watches. What? Oh, funny. I really liked it. I, I I reviewed this, the original one of these, which is a slightly different color scheme, but they bought out different color schemes of these. They've got this one, and then they've got a red one and a green one now. I just think this is a great value for money. Mm -hmm. And um, all those uh, SKX fans that can't go in the shower without having an ISO certified dive watch. Well, this is also <laughs> ISO compliant, so rest easy. And you can also, um, it, it, it's got a great bezel action on it, this watch. It's eco drive. It wears really well. You can put it on multiple different straps. I should, I sold mine. I should really buy another one, but um I think uh, it just a, this was the watch I had with the all blue. Yeah. This is the one that people most commonly realize. But they've they bought out a whole load of new, yeah. excuse me, a whole load of new mechanical ones, and then these quartz ones as well. I have the original Pepsi. one. A Pepsi. <laughs> yeah. What I do we think of this yeah. one? Yeah, it's just a it... solid looking dive watch, man. Like it's right. Just, yeah. Yeah, I had the uh, the left hand drive one on my list, but then Sam, when you sent me your list, I was like, "Oh, I better get my uh, get better get my citizen off of there." <laughs> but, but the left hand drive is the mechanical one, is it? I think so. Yeah, but I think it, it was right at five hundred bucks. I think for the left hand drive. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, we should actually. Well, let's see if we can find that one because they've done a whole. Yeah. Uh, we did briefly talk about these on a live stream the other day, and um, but yeah, these ones here. Yeah, I have the original, the the Eco Drive one, and I've had that thing. I, I had it before I ever started collecting watches, and it's still, I still wear it on occasion. It takes all kinds of straps. Like the thing is, I mean, it's beat yeah. up, like nobody's business. But 
I would tell anyone, like, if you're not super into watches, but you want something that's going to last, it's going to work, and you can do anything with it, you know, I guess some people shower I, according to I, Sam. I, 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 I wouldn't do that, I, but it also checks that it also checks that box that i love like you don't have to be super into watches but if you have a citizen pro master diver on your wrist other watch people are going to be like hey that's that's a great pick that's a good yeah. you know what i mean it's it's that's a great pick so you don't even have to be like don't not part of our group or like worry about like if you got the right thing that is like it's a solid classic pick mm -hmm. and you're gonna get you're gonna get props for it. it's like a you know like you're your Hamilton khaki or, you know, some, some just absolute classic that, you know, crazy watch people that we are, are going to be like, respect, respect. Yeah. yeah. And this, this has a lineage back to the military ones that I think the British army used as well. This, this mechanical one, I, I hope that citizen do more mechanicals because when we were doing the show last week, I think that Miota 901, Chris, we've talked about this loads of times. Yeah, I think yeah. that Miota 9015 is better than, the comparable yeah. Seiko ones, it, it, in my experience, are the ones that I've uh, yeah. bought. Tighter regulation, definitely, definitely. And more um, interesting uh, that you can make four interest-free payments. Do not make interest-free payments. Just, <laughs> if you cannot afford this, if you cannot afford this, do not buy this. That is a really so. handsome-looking watch, though. That's really yeah. good. And you'll be I, able to get I, it at a discount, for sure. I, I kind of like the, uh, the beefy uh, crown Yeah. on this. It's kind of cool. Yeah, gives it a gives it a more modern take than maybe uh, than maybe some of the other ones. Yeah, and that other um, I know I know it's nowhere near five hundred, but I, I always I wonder how successful that super beefy um, I find it now that super super beefy diver that they bought out that was all all titanium. Uh, yeah. I have to find it some not not this one. This one is obviously massive as well. But they bought out that purely titanium <laughs> one that's got the same hands and everything, but. I wonder whether that'll be like a runaway hit for them because it's it just looks so so quirky. I don't know. I have a pass. I, I, they've not got it on here for some reason. Maybe it's just too extreme for the casual uh, the casual viewer here. But yeah, they do they do a, a great job, uh, citizen, on a lot of that. I think they really, especially in the quartz range. I think they've really sewn up. And there's a really cool. Um, they do a lot of cool Jap Japan only ones mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Which you can find on a lot of the shopping in Japan not, stores. Yeah, Japan only, not UK only. If you find if you can find it in UK, it'll be here in the states. And I learned my lesson with that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, somebody said here the uh, the Zippo said some say it's the perfect dad watch. Citizen IF seven. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Always then, running. Always on time. Just pick it out of the watch. You know, pick it out of the box. But oh, I think yeah. that you said that a, a couple of weeks ago, right, Sam, where you feel like, you know, Seiko's trying to upscale a little bit and Citizen might have noticed that because it seems like they're putting out a lot of stuff that is just hitting a sweet spot design wise, right? Like it's it's kind of giving, you know, maybe that's why Seiko made that GMT. I mean, let's be honest about it, because does that to me as a newer watch collector, that GMT doesn't look any different. Than anything else Seiko has ever made, except for the fact that it has that GMT. That's a good, yeah, that's a good point. Like they definitely, yeah, they definitely absolutely stuck to their design. Like, right, there's nothing about. You're totally right. There's nothing about that watch that doesn't say Seiko, yeah. but it has that new function. It's yeah, yeah, it's yeah, cool. yeah. It's like they Found gave that. you an eight disc changer in your '92 Camaro, and you're like, yeah. <laughs> I found that beefy uh, citizen. That was the one I was talking about. This looks like oh, it's right. an absolute beast. Yeah. This thing, yeah, it's a crown knurl. It, it is. Yeah. Sign yep. me up. Yes, yep. sign Sign me up. crown. Oh man, like, does it? Will it leave a mark? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, I think I'll leave think a mark. It, <laughs> yeah, I think if you need to get rid of your uh, fingerprints for uh, yeah. for any reason, you can. Yeah. You'll, you'll easily yeah, do yeah. it on that uh, on that crown. It looks awesome, doesn't it? Um, cool. We had another question. Sweet. Did you see that one? The 1955 yes. Le Mans crash yep. was the car was crash was made of magnesium. Wow, the yeah. whole car. Yeah, that's bad. Ooh. Bad scene. Yeah, I'm gonna dream about the Le Mans race because we were, <laughs> we were discussing on the uh, on uh, WhatsApp before the Steve McQueen Monaco mm. that he never wore, and then we were mm. talking about the watches that he did wear, which was it was just this past it was pack. just this past weekend. I don't know if any anybody else tuned in. It was just this past weekend and. It was not hypercar was not super exciting because it was like a Toyota. It was Toyota's to lose, I'd say. 
and there weren't any other big manufacturers, Audi, et cetera. So uh, I was more interested in watching the uh, GTEs and uh, Corvette had a little tragic tragedy bump at the end. It was kind of sad because they were doing well, but, oh. uh, but yeah. yeah. Um, Historic so, race. Oh yeah. You showed that one, didn't you? Uh, oh, no looks problem. like a marathon bezel. <laughs> right. Yeah. And that's why I like it. <laughs> Is, is there any suggestions in the comments? Is there any watches that you guys have seen that you think are great value for around five hundred dollars? I think we had some solid picks there. Crown and def- just mentioned a Blue Pilot Flieger Citizen. Oh, that's the one. Yeah, that's the one you had, Chris. Did you? Yeah, you still yeah. That one? I do still have it. Well, I just uh, I can't for the life of me think of the uh, think of the model number. Let me take a quick glance at my yeah. Let, let's let's have. If you Let's remember see. a citizen reference number, Chris, I'll buy I know, it. right? Yeah. yeah. Because... Oh, it's a it's a BR two seven one X four twelve. It's like they're naming droids in Star Wars it. or something. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, I'm looking at my hashtags. I'm like, ah, oh, Citizen Eco Drive, cool. Like they don't, you know, like they make four of those. <laughs> I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, uh, it them because it was when you bought it, it wasn't available in the US, right. was it? Right. I imported it. Yep, customs, everything. Got it from oh, wow. the UK. Yep, got it from the UK. Uh, let's see. I can't. I can't see it on their site now. No, yeah, it's. Um, I was looking earlier. Uh, let's see. Speaking of pilots' watches, I wore my uh, Seiko Flightmaster to go see Top Gun Maverick this weekend. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. I felt I'm, it was I'm appropriate. It. Yep, I'm gonna see it tomorrow. It's it's uh. You'll like it. Oh, I, I, I'm sure I will. It looks great. A uh, little known trivia fact: my first ship was in the original Top Gun. Oh, well, I wasn't on. That. I wasn't on board then because I was too young. But uh, can I? Yeah. Uh, it's good, can it's I good share stuff. my? Share the old screen. Yeah. If, uh, yeah. Is that fraught with danger? No, uh, no. You see, go for it. I, I like. Yeah, because whenever we uh, we used to take friends and family to San Diego that had not been before, we you have to go in that bar. It's a barbecue restaurant now, isn't it? But that yeah. the scene from Top Gun, the Great Balls right. of Fire scene, the piano is still there, and you can yeah. take a picture with it. Kelly McGillis's old house is in Oceanside, California, and if you walk on the strip, like right parallel to the beach, you can just walk by her house, the house that they use as her house. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, I, I need to see it. In the cinema. Yeah, so. Oh, there it is. There, there, there she go. is. Yeah. Oh, I nice. Don't, uh, I don't. Oh, nice. Yeah, I don't have the reference. I gotta. I gotta dig. I'll dig the reference up in the next show. I'll. I'll post it. But. But still have it. Yeah, it's a. It's just a great. Like I love the Arabics on it. It's. It's solar, so it's always wound. It's ready to go in the watch box. Looks cool on a NATO. And uh, Neural Crown. I mean, Jason. Yes. Jason. <laughs> yes. They they do make it. They do make it in like a black gray. Just saying. Just saying. So. Really. Yes. Yes. So. That's and the first thing are... I noticed was the Neural Crown. I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now these are available in uh, in in should be available in the United States. I I yeah, don't I I will dig for the reference maybe on our next show or in the comments here I'll I'll post up but. Uh, but yeah, such a cool. Just like it hits the. Yeah. This is what I want in the the pilot chronograph. This is my but that, style. That neural crown makes sense. I mean, like if you were really flying and you had gloves, which I don't know if they really do mm-hmm. anymore because they have pressurized cabins and stuff. But I'm just saying, like every crown I've ever felt, except for this helm crown, which is pretty mm-hmm. beefy. Um, neural crowns by far are the easiest to grab. Less BS. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I feel like uh, it helps with um, setting the time and all the stuff you got to do. Because like my Zen 105 UTC, it's it's crown can be a little slippery at times. And so you got to like really stop and think about what you're doing because you're not really in the position you think yeah. you're in kind of thing. So Yeah. And typically like with all the field, like the, the Hamilton khaki, all the field watches, it's almost smooth. Like there's no... There's like it's just it barely sticks out. It's super hard to wind. I mean, I always found the Khaki King was hard to wind manually, you kind of just to get it going, and then uh, but always smooth. So this is uh, yes for the true pilot, true pilot stuff. It's cool. Nice. Yeah, we've got. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with that. That uh, QC is better from Citizen versus Seiko, and then we had another one which was asking whether it was the Carl Vincent. 
No, my it's first a... ship, my first ship was the Enterprise CVN sixty five, the greatest ship in the history of the United States Navy, after the USS Constitution, which is our oldest ship. But yeah, oh, so awesome. old iron sets. Yep, still, Enterprise still first nuclear still... first nuclear aircraft carrier ever made. Oh, fun! Wow. Yeah. And then, uh, Patrick, I'll ask you this, because uh, not that we, we, we've gone out of the realm of $500 watches now, but you're a big fan of Grand Seiko, as I am as well. What mm-hmm. do you think about Citizen's high-end quartz that they're doing? Because they've got a quartz around the 3000 3, So, now, they, they made, like, two variants of it. They have made one, like, from three years ago, which was, like, their, their super high-something quartz. And they wanted, like, $8,000 for it. And... That was the thing that sort of scared me away from it because they, they claimed, well, I forget what it was in terms of their Hertz or something like that. It was just absurdly higher than even the normal Hertz of a quartz. And it, the price tag was, was with it. And for me, 8,000 is a little too much for, for that, but I, I absolutely loved it and it had a display case back and, like the movement was almost like a glossy black. Like, I mean, it was just, it was slick. I don't, of course, remember any numbers on it or anything like that, you know, in terms of specs. But but that first one they made was really, really pretty. And then I think they just released sort of a color wave of three of them. There was like a green one and a, and a red one and a blue one. The green one, I think, was really nice. Except they, they put a little... They put a little embellishment on there. Like, I think they put a, a a little eagle face or something as a new citizen. Yes. And and I'm okay with that. But then I think down below, they put like another branding mark. And it was it was too much branding on too small of a dial. And it it sort of stole something away from me. But, but they brought the price down. Because that one, I think, was about $4,500. So... Yeah, I, th- I think I might have found it. Was it was it this one that was the one that was like eight thousand dollars? This uh, 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 it, it looks like that. It was very very plain, you know, German dress watch looking, and mm. so yeah. yeah, that that could be it. Yeah, th- and, I think uh, I, I think this is it because I think I saw somewhere that it was um, yeah, caliber one thousand quartz oscillator. Where was the um? I wonder so, if so can I ask the new guy question? <laughs> of, of Always, Chris, of Chris, if, of all the movement guys that know way more about movements. So, eight thousand dollars, right? Is that the best movement ever made? Because the rest of the watch, it could be a Daniel Wellington for all I know. You're completely right, and I'm not trying to be harsh. I'm just being honest about that. It's like that movement inside better pop out a cheese sandwich on occasion for eight like thousand dollars. <laughs> I wish they would show the back of it because at least the picture of the back did look pretty uh, special. There oh, there it is. Okay. And so I said, it at least kind of looked like a Darth Vader coolness, but is it $8,000 Darth Vader coolness? No way. And as you yeah, said, you're... the watch itself is so boring, it 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 doesn't go with it. Yeah, it's like, yeah. yeah. The most like simple Bauhaus three-hander I've ever seen. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's like the thing. Minimalism, perf- you know, like, and yeah, it doesn't yeah, stand So to answer it. your original question, Sam, yes, I was very excited about that movement because I loved the tech of it. Mm-hmm. But to Jason's point, when I saw it, I was like, really? Yeah. And I'm only asking because I know, I know Chris is familiar with Zen. I, I, I know Chris likes Zen a lot. And I don't know about you, Patrick, but, you know, they make that Frankfurt, what is it, business district or? Right, financial yep. district series. Yeah, yeah. And those yeah. are all yeah. like three to three to five thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Yeah, yeah. And they, and so they look, they're dress watches. Yeah. But they look really cool. Like it's mm-hmm. it's a, there's a little bit of flair in there, you know. Yeah. But when I saw that one, I was just like, oh, why would I spend eight thousand? I can get I can get two and a half. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's yeah, like because it's. <laughs> uh, Bulova does the high frequency. Movement, yeah, you know, and so. there's the beautiful new one. Yeah, but uh, uh, okay. But Jason, to answer your question, I love Zen, and I actually just committed to the U50 Professional 127 Limited Edition. Uh, is mine. Oh, nice! Congrats. Uh, nice. What, what what was what was that reference? The Zen the U so the when, the U50 but the then U50 the... Professional. So ah, right. 
they they made a U1 professional only 100 copies and i guess they made 150 copies of the U50 professional it right. sold out within like 3 hours yeah okay okay yeah. so you were, you got in on it so it cuz it's te it's tegmented the whole it's, thing it's it's fully tegmented even though i got it on the rubber strap because i think with the black bezel i think the rubber strap looks better okay and uh but they they supposedly made some cues one that Sam will hate because the original U50 has a date. They took the date off, nice. and, uh, and they yeah. they they changed the the lettering, it made it a little bigger, a little different, in other places, and took away some of the red accents to make it white. And they obviously made it into a left hand drive. So mm. those those are the the three care. Oh, it also has a domed crystal versus a yeah. flat crystal. Patrick, so. when that came out, when I saw the release, I got an email alert or something. Uh -huh. Dude, I threw my phone across the room and just left. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, nope, I'm saving up for something else. Nope, yeah, I just I threw my phone on the bed. I'm like, I'm not, yeah. this is yeah. going to go well, to 127 other people or whatever. Well, I, I got the email notification. I go, yes, please. And, mm -hmm. and was yeah. able to get in there with, uh, you know, my, my birthday's something 27. So I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I got my, uh, my kind of birthday number. So. That is beautiful. Oh, cool. oh, oh, as far as the pick, because you could pick. Uh, that's right. Yeah, which is really that's neat. Cool. You could, that is you could neat. pick yeah. between you know one to one hundred and fifty, uh, and and you know when I was on there, I think they only had like thirty five left, and uh, nice. and then of course, obviously, they sold instantaneously after that. So, yeah, but uh, they have not shipped it yet, so I don't know when that's going to happen. I ordered it like two weeks ago, and I've heard nothing. So yeah, they're usually pretty quick about shipping. That's I kind of what I heard, and that's why I was like, oh, okay, well, I guess they still have to make these. Sam, Sam and I are over here, like, cringing at the WatchBuys website. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, like I've been to one of their routes. Or... Yeah, I've been to one of these, but it's definitely, like, it's... it's yes, you know. they are great. They're fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, and also, and also uh, they're the only authorized dealer in the United States. Ask me how I know. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, I, I I do I, I think that Zins uh, I I've always liked like the Zin watches I, I like the oiled fill quartz but there's just never been one that I've like fully pulled the trigger on yet. Mm. But Chris, you're a huge Zin you're a big yeah, Zin fan, aren't you? Celebrate their celebrate their whole catalog. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. you've even got the co-branded Zin and Bell and Ross. That's right. Ones. Right. That's right. Hey, that's the that's only early. watch, Chris. I, I'm gonna tell you right now. That's the only watch I see in any of my Instagram scrolling that I yep. actually get jealous about oh, when nice. I see that. I, I, every time I see that piece, I'm like, I know I need it. I should go find one. I need to go yeah. own one. Yeah. And the only other one I think I felt that way about, and it's ridiculous because it's not in the same ballpark, is the L.L. Bean Hamilton. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Because yeah. that thing's just hilarious, but it'd be cool to have an L.L. Yeah. Bean yeah, I mean, I, and I'll say, you know, I, as I've said on the show before, like, you know, I wanted a 103 and I was like looking at the prices of them and used are not too bad still there. You know, you can get you can get I mean, even this crazy watch used watch market we're in, you can get a decent you can get a decent price for them. And at the time I was like, why would I you know, like, why could I, I could get a new one or I could get a used one for a deal that has a really cool story. Yeah, and so that was yeah. just so, and it's like it's and if I was ever gonna go for like a Speedmaster, I would never get the regular one. I would all always kind of find the like, oh, we made a hundred of these, and it was like you know special to Le Mans or whatever. It's like special racing, like you can in any color. There's so much option there, so definitely, uh, I I vote for instead of getting the standard one, go out and and find the find the cool unique one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a this is as we went off on a tangent on sort of quartz and the, the, this was a interesting one the 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 Aquatron yeah. wasn't it? I I really was excited about this watch and then when it came yeah. out and it was like three thousand dollars, I was like, oh. <laughs> exactly, mm, yeah. Because yeah. I think the uh, the Evolution is the nicer looking one because they made the kind of the classic Space View and then they made called like the Space View Evolution and it kind mm. of is a bit more there that one yeah it's a bit more you know, futuristic looking, yeah. but, uh, but you're right. The price tag is uh, a little higher than I'd pay for it. And, right. and by the way, congratulations, Mark on your UP or your U 50 pro pro brothers. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I uh, yeah, uh, yeah. These are three thousand three hundred, aren't they? I wonder if they'll they'll come down in in price. But um, yeah, I, I actually like this um this actually, but these are. I like these uh, legacy ones, but they're actually not. They're mechanicals. They're not tuning fork mm. movements, right. Right. which I suppose is cheating, really, isn't it? A little bit, but at least they've gone with the retro, retro goodness. It looks like they're good enough to hang out in the lounge, so that's yeah. you know that's good. That's what matters. Yeah, exactly. Hey, Chris. Yeah. Mark had a question for. I mean, uh, Sam. Mark had a question for Chris. Chris, have you He's... ever seen the ultra elusive Zin three five six? Uh, I think I know. Yeah, I think I know what, you're, what we're talking about here. The rare UTC. Oh, right. The with the power reserve. It's uh, it, yeah. I I know what you're talking about. It's very, uh, it's similar to they made a 103 with a moon phase. That one is like if if I ever saw one of those for sale, I would immediately pick it up. It was a a, a Zin 103 with a moon phase at the top, and oh, it's just wow. like because it was the seven seven the value movement can do a moon phase. Um, pretty cool. Pretty Here cool. Go. Speaking oh, about wow. resins, I own a 303 autobahn. Oh right, yeah. Well, Tachometer yeah. Right bezel, yeah. Awesome. They're, they're one of the they're one of the few brands where when I peruse that site. Which I know makes you guys upset, but when I peruse it, I'm like, well, "This insight's fine. That's fine." Yeah, I was like, "The 104, right, yeah. 104, I'd buy it. 103, I'd buy it." You know, right, like I, I'd yeah. buy it. I'd buy it. Yeah, they're just such good-looking pieces. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's a good like for me. It's a it's kind of it's a good like what I like to see in other watches. So I'll find that like uh, it's kind of my like home base where I, where i would go to be like this is this is how this is like standard issue german tool watch check and then if you you know if you have something that looks like that you know that, that picks it up it's uh it's good stuff yeah absolutely well that's been great you got any final final thoughts before we wrap it up here anyone i think we think we've answered most of the questions thanks everyone for for uh, all your questions and uh, comments and everything very much appreciated yeah, thanks guys. Cool. Yeah, cool. Thanks, guys. All right, well we'll close it down. Thanks everyone. See you next time on Casual Workshop Live. Bye everybody. Have a good right, night. Bye. Ooh, ooh, I'm gonna end the broadcast. <laughs>